Hey guys, welcome to Burksville here in Oklahoma City. So today we're gonna to do a set review. So we're gonna look at the Black Pearl, which is really exciting, but we're also gonna do something a little bit different. So this set was actually lent to us, so it's not gonna be available in the store, but it was lent to us by our good friend, Caden. And he, uh, on this one, it actually lived inside of a fish tank for about almost a decade, I think. Uh, so we've done a lot of cleanup work on it, uh, getting the gravel out of the bottom and everything, but I also wanted to kind of use this as an opportunity to highlight some of the things to watch out for when you're getting sets online. So we're going to go through some of the things that um, people can purposely exclude from the descriptions that can really uh, lose you value and just playability. So we're going to look at that stuff, but for the set itself, this is set number 4184, The Black Pearl. It was only available from November 2011 to December 2012, originally for $100.99.99. .99. Uh, now it's going to cost uh, $500 used to $1,000 new. So some of them get up to about $1,200, uh, especially if you're trying to get it on a site that has higher fees. But you can probably get it for around $1,000 new. But definitely a little bit of a jump. So <laughs> we're going to take a look at the set and look at those things we talked about. The Black Pearl has some amazing minifigs. It comes with six, four of which are exclusive to the set. Starting off on the left, you have Davy Jones which has a lot of exclusive uh, prints or pieces. Uh, the hat piece it was also used in the Flying Dutchman for SpongeBob. And then it has a claw piece, which is uh, used in one of the CMF uh, bug guys. Uh, but a really cool beard piece, which really captures those like kind of the waving tentacles that were in the movie. Next you have Bootstrap Bill, uh, his companion. Now this one in the movie, he's got like this long, thin, flowing hair. This one doesn't show that at all. It does have like the barnacles on the face and the starfish, but um, nothing on that way. Uh, then you have uh, Macus, I believe that's the right way to say it, but Macus and he's a, uh, like I really like the, uh, the headpiece on this, this uh, like shark uh, head. Other than that, I mean, he's got kind of like a, a mean look on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, so last one that is exclusive, so the first four of these are exclusive to this set, is the, actually the Jack Sparrow. Now the Jack Sparrow, it is exclusive to the set, but all of these pieces are in other Jack Sparrows and other sets. So it's just this unique combination of these ones. Now with Jack Sparrow especially, you need to be careful with the face because the different expressions can be the, like the, one side of the face can be the same on another head, but then the other side is different. So you really got to be careful that you're getting the right head on it. But um, in this uh, combination, exclusive. Then you have uh, Mr. Gibbs, uh, his handy sidekick, <laughs> which actually was one of the few characters that was in all the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, as I found out. Um, but he's he's in several other sets, um, pretty standard fig, but I really like the representation of the actor here, and it's pretty accurate. And then you've got Will Turner, which, I mean, Will Turner, Turner is in a, almost every single one, uh, but he's uh, just a good standby, definitely captures the actor's face, and uh, overall, the figs are great in this set. For the main body of the ship, we have seven black sails, uh, just pure black. Uh, they are really nice because they can be used in a lot of other mocks, and they're also very accurate to the overall ship uh, in the movie. Then on the top, you have the kind of modified Jolly Roger flag, the pir classic pirate flag. Then you've got the waist deck in the middle of the, uh, the forecastle. Forecastle? I'm trying to learn my ships. <laughs> the forecastle and the, uh, the captain's quarter in the aft. So... Then you've got, oh, obviously the steering uh, wheel uh, up on the, uh, above the captain's quarters. For the front part of the ship, the forecastle, uh, the overall structure is just sticks to the classic boat pieces and then has the uh, figurehead up here, uh, which in the movie is a um, kind of an all black statue with wings, kind of an angelic woman holding her outstretched hand with a bird taking flight. In here, I like the overall representation, but the one thing that I kind of, like the feather that they use is dark bluish gray, uh, which I think that they should have done a bird mold, but if they were gonna do a, fe a feather, 
they really should have just done it in black. Like that would have matched it. It would have been it would have been less um, like you've got this almost completely black ship with a gray piece just sticking out the front. So that wouldn't have required a new mold or anything, which I definitely understand. Like that's costly, but a new color for a mold or even I think they've done it before. But definitely in this ship, um, I think black would have been definitely ideal. Next up, we have the waste deck, which I have the ship propped up a little bit so we can get a better view. But in the front, you have some storage barrels, you have the anchor, and then in the you have the cannon deck all the way through. Uh, the two masts connect down there, and then you have the staircase going up, as well as the door to the captain's quarters. Now in the center here, we have four cannons in this version. Uh, originally, and if you get it anywhere else, it's going to have two and it's also going to be on reddish brown bases, not red. This was just a change that the that this set's owner, Caden, did. Uh, but uh, one thing is that it actually has six portholes for uh, for them to fire through. Uh, only four of them can have cannons in them at all. The other two are blocked by the staircases, so they're just for show from the outside. The other thing that I saw in, found interesting is that in the instructions it shows to put uh, them in the front. Uh, in both of those and that makes more sense if you're only gonna have two you're gonna protect both sides but in all the pictures for the set it shows the two on the side facing the camera which I think is a little bit um, dishonest to be honest <laughs> where the only reason why they did that is because it looks better with both of them showing the camera it looks with better with it being full and if you were to just buy it based on what you saw in the box or what you saw in the pictures advertising the set you I believe would think I thought it came with four uh, cannons so I find that a little bit deceptive but um, that is uh, I'm not gonna get too far into that but the uh, anchor here does drop over the side and still say connected so <laughs> nice connection there <laughs> but changing the subject <laughs> And the last part of the main structure of the ship is the aft with the captain's quarters and the uh, steering column on the top. It also has three lanterns on the back and then a gold window trimming all around. Now in the side here, this door, uh, it does swing open and there is a matching one on the other side. And then also this top deck piece lifts off to allow, you know, viewing and playing on the inside of it. Uh, Inside the cabin, you have a table and chair and then map, bottle, just kind of like a, a bare, you know, bare minimum uh, quarters. Uh, but overall, the structure of it is, is pretty robust. I think when you compare it to something like Queen Anne's Revenge, it is definitely a lot more simplistic in every way possible. But the Black Pearl was a much more simplistic, poorer ship than the Queen Anne's Revenge. So now we're gonna do something a little bit different. So I wanted to use the opportunity of using a pirate ship to kind of talk about Lego pirates, <laughs> not the set, not the types of sets, but the people that kind of use Lego to steal money. Uh, now, the, all of these things that we're gonna talk about could be used by people that are just legitimate mistakes, and they can also be misrepresentations on purpose. So a big thing that I see is people, now this one is usually the more genuine one. People don't really know how to build their sets, <laughs> so, You'd think it's just following the directions, but either one, they uh, miss a step, make a mistake, anything like that, or they uh, they make changes, they customize it, which is not a bad thing. That's what LEGO is all about. But when you look at buying a set, you probably want this original set is. And if that's the case, you have to really look. So like things like the cannons on this set, or I mean, even like little things like the front piece here, um, just different things can be missing, customized, uh, especially if we had gotten this set in the, if, when we first got this from Caden, it needed a lot of work. But if you shoot it from different angles and different and different perspectives, you can hide a lot of that stuff. So, and that brings us to the next one, images can hide issues. So when you shoot it from one angle, a piece of the set may cover up something. It doesn't really show what's inside. It doesn't really show, um, like on minifigs, you may show the front of the minifig, but you can have issues with them. So you wanna be careful with uh, posts and, and people selling that say like, you know, images available, um, you, get what you, you get what you see kind of thing. Because a lot of times on images, you can't see 
the most important things. Uh, then finally, with minifigs especially, there's a lot of issues with like torso cracks and bite marks and alternate faces, um, even cracked arms that um, are very hard to see. Like when we get, get in minifigs in the shop to trade in, we actually bring them over to a white light uh, and then we kind of tilt them in the light so that we can see the cracks and see the cracks that are forming. So you can only really see that in person. Uh, so if you are going to buy a set that's high dollar that you're getting a good deal at, ask for those those images. Ask to see the, if there's any torso cracks or arm cracks. Um, and we got a couple images that I'm that I'm showing here of of those issues that that we've seen on this set because on this one in particular, uh, Captain uh, Jack Sparrow has a cracked torso. You've got uh, Mr. Gibbs has a cracked arm, and then you've got bite marks on Davy Jones's head, which those bite marks would bring down his value significantly. So you'd have to either replace the head, and, and if a piece is, is uh, rare to something, it can be really hard to find. And with that 99% complete, you can hide a lot with that. So like, they'll be like, not a uh, set, 99% complete. But these sales, while technically, if all the sales were gone, it would be under that 99% or over that 99%, I should say, uh, they are gonna cost a fortune to replace. Uh, I think a full sale replacement on this is somewhere around $100, which is just insane. So be careful with that 99% complete because it's, it's legitimately used in nobody's perfect, but it can also be abused to strip out those really expensive pieces. So that's kind of the things to look at. We may do some more uh, more sections like this in the future of kind of what, um, what to look out for, but on this set, just wanted to point those things out. So that's the Black Pearl. So I really love this set. I mean, it's a sleek black design that it kind of could fit in with any pirate ship type thing. It also gives us all these black sails and pieces that you can use in other builds. And the figs are fantastic, especially Davy Jones. I mean, Bootstrap Bill and the other ones, they're all great too, but uh, Davy Jones with the claw hand and uh, just kind of the, the whole headpiece and the beard is just really nice. We all, this also gave us the opportunity to look at those things for you to watch out out there with. So, uh, People make changes to their sets. They they you know do th change things up. Things break. They replace them. Sometimes like this one, it's going to be a positive thing, like with the four cannons, or in my opinion, it is. But you know the, the color swap to the red. Sometimes it could be negative things. The main thing is, is it okay with you? Just make sure to look for those things to see if there are things that are okay with you. Uh, if it's going to scream out to you that that's wrong, it's not good. <laughs> so better to discover it before than after. The other one is. Images can hide uh, problems with the set. You know, it's not always going to show torso cracks. It's not always going to show bites on the head, just the lighting. So if you do buy something either in person in a store like this, or which we do a really good job of trying to check for those things, but anywhere, uh, or if online, uh, just make sure to ask those questions or look at those things and make sure that you're, you're kind of covered. Um, then also, uh, alternate faces. That was the other one that I forgot to say. So make sure to, to people, people mix up their collections. So they, they collect all the Pirates of the Caribbean stuff and the Jack Sparrow has one side can actually be the same, the other side different. So just really check over your stuff. So this actually was a great opportunity. Thank you, Caden, for, uh, for lending us this set and allowing us to kind of, I got to play with a set that I don't personally own. And then also we got to, uh, to look at it together and see those things that, you know, sets through their lives. I mean, living in a fish tank, it definitely caused a lot of things we had to clean up, like the uh, there was mold on the uh, the sails, but it's all fixable. If you take the right care, you can, you can bring almost any set back. Uh, we'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and, uh, and turn on those notifications so you can see when we post our next video. See you next time.